one of the most prominent news stories both during and after the 2016 presidential campaign is the hacking of the Democratic National Committee and phishing of then-Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta's email system, along with the public release of thousands of emails, many of which included damaging revelations about the Democratic Party presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. The U.S. government publicly announced on October 7, 2016, that it was confident Russia orchestrated the hacking of the Democratic National Committee and other political organizations of the Democratic Party. On December 29, 2016, the FBI and DHS released a report which details evidence that Russia was behind the attacks. President Donald Trump rejects this assessment, pointing to the intelligence community's numerous failures over recent years as cause to view their conclusions with suspicion. Of course, the establishment media have used this as an opportunity to attack Trump, and Trump's opponents have used this to try to delegitimize his electoral victory. Many of the most important facts of the case are dubious and or classified, so the general public may not have the full details for many years to come. Even though there is no evidence that the actual voting process was hacked, let us assume for the sake of argument that the Russian government was responsible for the most extreme charge made by anyone, that of altering the outcome of the election to hand Trump the presidency. I will attempt to show that if they did this, they were justified in doing it, preventing nuclear war. Those who believe that the state is a necessary institution almost unanimously take the position that a government's primary purpose is to defend its subjects from external threats. In the world today, there is no greater potential threat to Russian citizens than a war with the United States. Of the two major presidential candidates, Clinton was the most bellicose toward Russia, and her interventionist position on the Syrian civil war had great potential to bring American and Russian forces into direct conflict with each other. Once two global powers are at war, developments can quickly spiral out of hand. Given the great advantage that the United States enjoys in conventional military firepower, the Russians could very well escalate to the use of nuclear weapons. Thus, Clinton was more likely to cause World War III and the end of life as we know it than Trump. Therefore, in the estimation of a competent Russian policymaker, it was in the best interest of Russian citizens, and everyone else for that matter, for Russia to interfere in the U.S. presidential election to help Trump win. Note that since the time of this writing, Trump has interfered in the Syrian civil war, though this is more of a token effort than any serious attempt to alter the outcome. Ancient liberty. From ancient times, there has been a sense that at least some of the citizenry should have a voice in determining the nature of governing structures which affect them. If we take this premise to its logical conclusion, one should not only have some means to alter the state in one's own jurisdiction, but every state which has a measurable effect on one's life. Being the most powerful and dangerous state apparatus in human history, the United States government affects everyone in the world through its foreign policy. Non-citizens of the United States are legally prohibited from voting in U.S. election under pain of fines, imprisonment, inadmissibility, and or deportation. Non-citizens are also legally prohibited from funding political campaigns, parties, or communications. But a foreign national does have the means to alter a U.S. election result by hacking political party servers, emails of campaign staff, and or voting machines. Though a state does not legitimately act as the agent of its citizens in theory, this is the current way of the world. For the state to monopolize the service of representing an individual's interests on the global stage is a travesty, but to monopolize this service and then fail to provide it is even worse. So again, if the state is to defend its subjects against external threats and act as their agent in foreign affairs, then a government may interfere with another government's democratic process to attempt to ensure favorable results for its people. The moral low ground. The establishment media is attempting to sell outrage over Russian interference in American democracy. 
but is conveniently omitting the fact that espionage is a nearly universal aspect of statecraft, and cyber warfare is an essential aspect of this for all states which are capable of it. Even allies spy on each other in the hopes of avoiding being blindsided by a sudden shift in foreign policy. The idea that the Russian government is aggressing against Americans, absent any cyber attacks by the U.S. government against Russia, is too naive to take seriously. Furthermore, as the U.S. has a dark and bloody history of dealing with unfavorable election trends by means of carrying out political assassinations, aiding coup d'etat, and militarily invading other countries, American political leaders have no room to talk about another state interfering non-violently in a foreign country's political processes. Conclusion. Regardless of the actual facts of the case, the Russian government would have been justified in trying to prevent a war between two nuclear states, as well as in acting on behalf of its citizens rather than failing to do so. Such a sharp line of argumentation has gone completely unexplored by the establishment media, and one may speculate that this is due to a combination of their role as propagandists for the U.S. government, a lack of insightful boldness, and the implications of such reasoning for the status quo global political arrangement.